So this was nearly my favorite case of 2020. Uh, is a really nice gentleman who had had a severe injury to his eye, uh, open globe repaired elsewhere. And he came in with this dislocated uh, crystalline lens in the back of his eye and this iris dialysis for about 180 degrees. So our original plan was to suture the iris with this very novel, previously described, but very novel sewing machine technique. And I'm retro loading a needle here with a 90 proline. And that truthfully was probably one of the most difficult parts of this entire case. We've made a paracentesis and we're using these really nice MST forceps to help grasp the iris and get it in position. We then basically penetrate the iris with our needle that's got the suture loaded. We're gonna come out in an appropriate position through the sclera. Uh, I have sped this up because it was quite tedious as you'll be able to see and I didn't wanna 10 minute surgical video. And so I'm basically taking that proline right now and I'm pulling it out, taking care not to pull it out of the needle. I wanna pull the loose end. Um, and now I've got that loose end out. I'm gonna grasp it. I'll go back in with the needle. Now I'll re move over and re-engage a little iris adjacent to where I had just grabbed. Here, I'll use my MSTs to kind of help me. And right next to it. And now I go back through and I go out through another part of the sclera. Now you can see I pull back a little bit. That gives me a loop. I'm able to externalize that proline now. And I want to keep that loop. I pull it back out. Now I take a 2 silk suture and I'm going to try to feed it through this loop to keep the loop from going back into the eye. So I do this again. And now, unfortunately, uh, my proline's come out. So I decided to just go ahead and tie this off. Uh, ideally, I wanted to run these all the way across and then tie it to itself. Uh, but instead, what I do is I take that 2 silk and I feed the uh, proline under those loops. And that keeps that loop from getting back into the eye. I reload my needle and now uh, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to pass through this iris grasping a bit of iris there, coming out in an appropriate fashion. And I'm gonna just do the same thing. Once again, I'd like to have done this in a full running fashion. I'm gonna externalize that loose end, not pulling out of the needle tip, but I wanna pull the loose end out, go back in. Now I'm gonna re-engage my iris. I'm gonna come out again. This time I'm trying to space these bites out a little bit further. And at this point, I've only made two passes on this round of things, and the iris is looking pretty good. So I basically say, hey, you know what? I'm just going to externalize this thing, tie it to itself, and, uh, and a pretty decent-looking round pupil. Now, we still have to go in and deal with the vitrectomy and the dislocated crystalline lens. There were a few zonules that were still holding this lens in place, and so we were able to cut those too dense of a lens to remove with just the 25 gauge cutter. So we go ahead and make sure that our vitreous is clear anteriorly, that we don't have any vitreous in the AC. Then we use our 20 gauge frag after we enlarge that incision. And I really love this kind of push the lens off of the tip, you know, so if you do spear it like this, just push it with your light pipe, re-engage, and you should be able, if you've got the appropriate power set on your frag, to, uh, to be able to just engage that lens material and constantly have it kind of tumble into your frag. The number one mistake I see people make when they're doing frag and the frag and uh, the lens fragments are just shooting off the tip of the fragmentome is that they have their power turned way too high. You can see here, I'm just barely using, I think 20 was the max that I used on power to get that lens uh, out of there. Sometimes you'll have to go higher, but this wasn't that dense of a lens. Now, this is where things get tricky. So this patient was under general anesthesia and unfortunately had a leak around their LMA. And so their CO2 levels were starting to go up. So they said, hey, look, you have basically one chance to get this lens in. Now, this is the Zeiss Lucia lens. I really like this lens because it's almost unbreakable. The haptics really do not separate off from the lens and they don't kink. So um, we were under a bit of pressure. Now, one of the things I should have done uh, is I should have had this lens in the warmer um, because it really didn't fold well. And we had previously tried to inject this lens in another patient and the haptic got caught in the injector. So I was just gonna fold it, 
but it wasn't warm enough. So we get the first haptic out really nicely. And at this point, they're saying you've got about five minutes. You can see you use the cautery to just kind of bar barb the end of that. And uh, we push that end in. So at this point, anesthesia is saying, look, how much time do you need? We're saying, look, you know what? Let's live to fight another day. So we just externalize this lens. And we're going to leave the patient a fake. It can come back and put a lens in secondarily, uh, probably in a similar approach. A little disappointing, very humbling. That's happened to me before, but never in a situation where we couldn't at least try to go back and have another shot at it. Thanks for watching.